I've decided to make some modifications to the kit. One thing I'm doing is I'm replacing the old plastic and brass wheels with some new nickel silver ones. These are made by Athern. They came on the geared um, half axles and everything. The axles are simple to press out. You just use a pressing tool. They come right out. Now the Hobbytown axle is um, 1 16th of an inch where the wheel mounts so I had to use some bushings to make the Athern wheels fit. The plastic for the insulated wheels and then brass for the grounded ones. I cut out each piece and tested out the brass ones. I crimp with some cutting pliers real gently so they kind of press into place because they slip on the axles. Then the plastic ones I have to drill the hole in the middle just a tiny bit larger so that it'll fit. This is all an extremely trial and error process so if one, if one bushing doesn't fit I just throw it away and make a new one until the wheels work smoothly. And then I test out each axle, each wheel, make sure it spins properly on there and doesn't wobble. And looks like I've got this one working pretty well now. So I'll test this out, make sure everything's running smooth, and this will hopefully make it work better and look better. Alright, I've got all the wheels on there now. Having all metal really does help it to look better. And these are 42 inch, unlike the original 40, so the appearance is also to scale now. It took some work, but I've got them all centered pretty well. So that's running nice and smooth. And that'll also help with electrical pickup. And that'll allow me to add electrical wipers later too, if I want. The only downside is that it's got a bit less traction for the time being, but that should improve as the nickel plating wears down. Well, for now, that's running really good. Another modification I'm making is to add a large flywheel. This is an actual Hobbytown flywheel that I got from the owner, who still has some parts left. Uh, along with these pillow blocks, I just made some brackets from brass to make them fit in the frame. The only change I made to the flywheel is I replaced the original 2.5 millimeter shaft with a 2.4 millimeter because this couldn't actually turn freely in the bearings. So those will just glue in place in there and that should hopefully hold up well and make it run a bit smoother. Got the flywheel mounted in there nice and secure. It's turning freely. And powered up. Helps add some momentum to it. Gotta give it another track test just to be sure everything's working right. And there's no extra noise or vibration coming from that flywheel. So I think that turned out well. One more thing I'm gonna be doing for the chassis is I'm gonna put in a new motor. Now the old motor it's a really good runner, works just fine, but I'm already putting so much other work into this thing that I just want to make everything as awesome as possible. I got a really good deal on this cordless motor here. It's got a 9-pole armature, and according to the spec sheet, about twice as much torque as your normal large HO scale motor, so it should have a lot of power to drive this thing. Mount the motor. I made this bracket here real quick. It's just some sheet brass and some wire. I bent it into shape, soldered it together, and it fits right into this slot here. So the motor mount will mount on that and line up with the flywheel. Just for a little before and after comparison on noise and coasting and such, here's the old motor powered up again with the flywheel. And even with that big flywheel, it doesn't coast a whole lot just because the old DC-90 is such a tight motor. 
And now let's see it with the other one. That is much quieter than the old motor. And for coasting, goes a whole lot longer. One last improvement I made was to put in a standard Hobbytown Universal to replace the drive tubing. And the tubing it worked, but there was just this little bit of bounce that I didn't really like. So the Hobbytown Universal is a lot more sturdy in how it runs and it just helps it to work that much smoother. And despite the large size, that new motor opens up quite a bit of space inside. So let's go see how it runs on the track now. Alright, running with the Corliss motor and flywheel drive. It's much quieter now. The only noise that's left is the gear tower. The speed control is very smooth. It's got a top speed of maybe 80 miles per hour there. And it's no low speed king, but it's still not bad for a 7 to 1 gear ratio. And if that was more like a standard 12 or 14 to 1, that'd be crawling there. And pulling that load, that's only drawing about 30 milliamps. It's about one tenth what the other motor was drawing. So, the performance with the standard Hobbytown drive, already very good with the improved motor, flywheel, and all-metal wheels. This has really become a fantastic runner.